Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to see you all here. So in today's video, we will talk about how to read and perform RMA normalization on microarray data in R. So let's get started. So in today's video, I want to specifically talk about DNA microarray and talk about the terminologies associated with it, followed by which I want to take a look at and talk about the DNA microarray workflow and the list of normalization methods available. And lastly, I want to demonstrate how to fetch this data from NCBI GEO, uh, process it and perform RMA normalization, and lastly, uh, map the probe IDs to the gene symbols. In one of my previous videos, I have spoken about the different methods available to measure gene expression where I have briefly spoken about microarray and RNA sequencing methods. Uh, if you're not sure about what that video is, I will add the link to that video in the top right corner here. So make sure you check that out. Uh, so in today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about microarray and talk more about the details of microarray because today we are dealing with microarray data. Microarray can simply be defined as um, a collection of microscopic features uh, which can be bound or probed with the target molecule and when they are bound with the target molecule, they generate some signal which can be quantified. There are various types of microarrays and uh, they can be distinguished based on the nature of the probe, the type of the solid support uh, used and the method used to quantify the signal. In case of a DNA microarray, the probe is a DNA sequence that is bound to the solid surface support and these probes are synthesized and immobilized as discrete features or spots. So at each of these features or spots, there are millions of identical probes that are immobilized. They are allowed to hybridize with the fluorescently labeled target sequences. Uh, in case of a gene expression uh, experiment, the target sequences will be the mRNA or transcript sequences from uh, all the genes and they will be allowed to hybridize. Uh, so the genes uh, which, are, which for the transcript sequences from each gene will be bound to the complementary strands of the probes. And in the next step, the, the ones that are not bound will be washed off. So finally, we get a readout uh, of the signal intensities. So in this case, we can see that a higher number of transcript copies from gene A are bound to the complementary probes and generates a higher signal intensity in indicating that gene A has higher expression compared to gene B. So this was just the basic concept of how DNA microarray works. Um, today we will be using the data generated using FMetrix gene chip and FMetrix gene chip is a commercial microarray platform which is commonly used uh, to uh, genotype human samples and uh, create gene expression profiles. Uh, so in the next slide I want to show you how the FMetrix gene chip look and uh, talk a, a little bit about the different terminologies that are used uh, when we are talking about this uh, technology. So this is how an FMetrix gene chip looks like. It consists of the small square, which is a wafer. Uh, it's a five inch by five inch glass wafer. And it consists of further small squares, which are called chips. And the dimension of each of these chip is 1.28 by 1.28 centimeter. And further, each of these chip consists of over 6.5 million features. They consist of even smaller uh, minuscule squares which are called features and at each of these locations there are millions of identical probes that are immobilized. So talking a little bit more about the details of the workflow, so uh, RNA is extracted from the sample and is labeled with fluorescent tags and these fluorescently labeled RNA are then broken down into fragments of various sizes and then the RNA is added to the array for it to uh, bind with or hybridize with the complementary probes. So RNA will only stick to the probes if the sequence uh, uh, of the RNA is complementary to that of the probe, otherwise it will not stick to it. Uh, after uh, that step, the array is washed off. So any RNA that is not bound will be washed off. So genes having high uh, expression in your samples will have more number of RNA fragments and these RNA fragments will hybridize with the complementary probes resulting in the higher signal intensity compared to those genes uh, that are not highly expressed or not expressed at all. 
this image is an actual expression array after scanning and the image on the right is a zoomed in version of the section of uh, this image. So uh, the black spots tells us that uh, no RNA hybridized with the probes and the intensity level here goes from dark blue which is the lowest to red or white uh, which is the highest. So higher the intensity meaning uh, more number of RNA fragments hybridized with the features indicating that the gene was expressed at a higher level. These are some of the common methods available uh, to perform a normalization for microarray data but today we are going to use RMA method to normalize our data. And the requirements for today are we are going to use three packages. So we are going to use tidyverse to manipulate data. We are using GEO query package to retrieve some uh, data from the NCBI GEO. And we are using the AFI package uh, which provides us the uh, function to perform RMA normalization. So let's switch screens to our studio to get started. So before I start writing the code, I want to quickly show you what data we will be using today. So let us go to NCBI GEO. Although I will not be retrieving the data set from the website, uh, we will be using GeoQuery package to download the uh, supplementary files associated with this record. So the accession ID is GSC148537. And this data set is a breast cancer data set. So uh, this, the overall design tells us that the cells are treated with either control short hairpin RNA or the uh, SHRNA constructs, which are targeting a gene to determine the effect of SPCA2 knockdown. So essentially we have RNA, which is extracted from two biological replicates uh, per sample class. And they are used as input on an Ephemetrix microarray to determine changes in gene expression. So we have four samples, uh, two replicates, biological replicates from each group. And essentially what we want is these files. So these are dot uh, .cell files and these files are generated by Ephemetrix uh, DNA microarray image analysis uh, software. And these files contains the information extracted from the probes and it contains a lot of data points and these are usually large files. So we cannot use the files uh, and compare the expression uh, from the intensities of the data stored in these files. So we need to perform normalization, but these are essentially the raw files uh, when we uh, talk about the microarray data. Now let's go to our studio to fetch these files. So before that, we will load the libraries first. Now let's fetch the supplementary file. There is a function uh, in the GeoQuery package to get supplementary file, which is get supplementary, get geo supplementary files. And we provide it with our GSE ID and we done this. This has finished running and you'll be able to see that a folder with the GSE ID has been created. So when I click on this folder, I can see that a file uh, with underscore raw dot tar has been downloaded. So I know that all my dot cell files will be present in this uh, folder. So I need to uh, uncompress the tar file. So let's uncompress that tar file. So untar files, I will untar my files. So Let's give the location of um, JSC the location of the dot tar file, and I want to I want to extract it in my data folder. So right now my data folder is empty. I want all the cell files to be extracted here. So. The external directory would be data and I will run this so I have misspelled untar and now let's check uh, so it seems that I have all my cell files here now let's read in the cell files uh, so reading in dot cell files so I am going to use a function called read fe from the fe package and I will provide it with the path to where all my cell files are present. So all my cell files are present in the data folder. So that will be the path. And I would want to store it as in a variable called raw data. 
now that it has created a raw data object let's quickly take a look at what this data what this object has so it essentially is an fe batch object which contains a bunch of information like a cdf number of samples number of genes the annotation uh, so we are going to use this raw data object uh, and run our rma normalization so i'm going to use the function rma which is from the fe package and use raw data object and then assign it to a new variable called normalized data and i'm just going to add a comment for me normalization and now let's run this So it has performed a bunch of steps. It has performed background correction, normalizing, and calculated expression. Let's take a look at normalize.data object. So it seems that its data has a bunch of information like assay data, information about the protocol, phenotypic data, as well as additional information. So now let's um, fetch the RMA normalize expression data from this object. So get expression estimates and we are going to use a function called expression and use the normalized data object and save it to a variable called normalized expression. And now let's run this. It has created a matrix in the environment pane. So I'm going to click on that. And we have the RMA normalized expression values for each of these probes across all the samples. Since this is a matrix, uh, let's convert it to a data frame. And run this. So now we have our expression estimates in a data frame. Now the next step would be to map these probes to gene symbol uh, because uh, having these probes is not informative. Uh, we would want to map these uh, to the gene symbols so we can compare the expression of genes. Uh, so let's do that. Map probe IDs to gene symbols. For that, we will use a function called getGEO from GEO um, query package and provide with our accession IDs. So our accession ID is GSE 148 5G7 and we want the GSE matrix to be true. And now let's save this to a variable. So it has finished fetching the uh, GSE matrix for this um, GSE accession ID. So now let's uh, fetch feature data to get ID to G symbol mapping. Since GSE is a large list, uh, let's get the data for that's related to our um, experiment so let's get the feature data and the data and let's store this in a variable called feature data and now let's run this so let's open the feature data now and we can see that there are a bunch of uh, columns here corresponding to our probe IDs. So we have a lot of information, uh, but our uh, column of interest is the gene symbol. So apparently we can subset and get this uh, column and the probe IDs, which is the first column so that we can get the ID to gene symbol mapping. So let's, let's subset this. So I want column 1 and, and column 11 and let's subset this. So now our feature data has only the probe ID column and the gene symbol column. So now let's merge this data frame uh, to our normalized expression data frame so that 
along with the provided information, we can also have a column with the gene symbols. So let's merge the data set. So we have normalized expression and we would want to make uh, these row names into a column. Uh, because we will be combining or joining both of these data frames by that column. Uh, so we let's make that into a column and let's call it ID. And now I want to do an inner join with this data set. So hence I'm using a dot because I want to use the same data set as the X and the Y would be the feature data. And I want to combine both of these data frames by ID because in my normalized expression, the IDs are the probes and in my feature data, the probes are also in the ID column. So I want to merge them by the ID column. And now let's save it back to normalized expression to have it all in one data frame. And now let's run this. So let's look at our data frame so this is a normalized dot expression here we have the id column where we have our probes and we have the gene symbols so now we can if we want to make a comparison across certain genes using this uh, normalized expression data we can do that so that's all i had for today's video uh, i will be uploading my script to github and the link of which i will be adding in my description below I will also add links to additional resources, papers, and the link to the data set that we used today. And if you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it, and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.